Hi there folks, uh, good to be back and uh, I've got a different video for you this time. I've decided I'm going to dismantle and um, discard my old Medelli SP4200. Um, I've been having a few problems with this actually, I've done quite a few repairs on it over the years but it's kind of reached the end of its life and uh, it's no point me spending more time fixing it all the time if, it just, if it's just going to keep playing up. It's had a lot of use. I've had this for six years, I bought this back in 2015, so yeah that's six years, so it's had a pretty good run. Um, it's the original model I think that they released uh, around that time, because this has got the slightly different display here, it's like a darker grey, and whereas the newer Medelli is that's lighter, and there's, um, and also the wording, some of the wording's actually uh, stamped in red, so this is an older model. But it's done pretty well. I've done a few repairs on it, as you'll probably see from the top here. I've um, replaced the on-off switch just with this rocker switch here, because that was all I had lying around. So that's a, a repair that I did there, and I've fixed up quite a few things internally as well. Right now, the main problem I've got is the keys. Quite often they're cutting in and out, and I'm getting loud night notes coming through, and it's. And I've tried cleaning the key bed out, vacuuming and cleaning it up with a cloth and everything, but it still still keeps failing on me. So I've got three of these things. I don't really need this one. I think it's time I got rid of it. So I'm going to basically take it apart and uh, disassemble all the bits. I'll keep all the parts and use them as spares. And uh, hopefully this case I can just use a saw or something like this that I can just basically saw it in half and... Uh, recycle it, so uh, nothing's going to get wasted. So I guess we'll begin the surgery. We'll just see how we go bit by bit. Um, I've already taken the screws out of the back, so I've got a collection of screws here. Uh, there's two different types. Uh, there's they're both similar sort of screwdriver, but uh, they're just a slightly different size screw. Okay, um, I'll turn it over actually, and we'll have a quick look. So. Let's just do that. There we go. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws along the front here that I've taken out. Okay, and they're just the they're just the smaller screw which I've got here. Okay, don't know if you'll be able to see that, but that's that's the small screw. Then there's uh, screws along the side here, along the back. Okay, these two here, they've all got arrows next to them, so you can't, you know, you can't go wrong. The, the only screws that you remove are the ones that have arrows, okay? And down the side as well, and that's the slightly larger screws, okay? And just a regular screwdriver. Um, I've got two different sizes I've used for the two different screws, and uh, they do the job fine. So I've done that, so right now I need to obviously open up the lid and... Uh, start taking it apart. So, you would have seen this in a few of my other videos, it's pretty straightforward, you just lift lift the lid like so, okay, and you're inside, okay. Um, we've got these ribbon cables which are connected to the uh, one of the circuit boards on the top here, so we can just reach in and carefully remove those, okay. I might even see if I can keep those, they might be permanently attached, I don't know if I can, but anyway. So there's those two there, and there's just another ribbon cable here, which goes to the, uh, this is the um, plug underneath, which is for your unit pedal, you know, your three pedals, which you can connect to the Medelli, that's via this ribbon cable, um, which connects underneath there. And that's it, so that separates the two parts, that's all we've got to do. So the idea is, is that I'll take out these boards here, keep those as spares, uh, maybe just keep one of the speakers, so I've got that as a spear, and I'll keep um, maybe a couple of sets of keys there because it's handy if I need to replace any broken keys, which has happened actually um, a couple of times through lots of wear and tear. You would have seen I've taped up a couple here. In fact, that tape's starting to come off. Okay, I'll just use some insulation tape, and I've tried using a little bit of glue as well just to sort of glue them back together when they've broken. That's just from rough handling, you know, I've used this a lot on the road and at home and it's had so much use that things just wear out. Um, so that's so that's where I'm going to start. So, well, I guess what I'll do is I will start taking out a couple of these keys, or sets of keys, and 
if I keep they're kind of in different groups, so if I keep one of each group, then I've got that as a spare for my other keyboards if I need them. So I'm just looking at perhaps the ones that are in the best condition. Um, well, I'll just take these out for a start, actually. Just take the lower ones out. That might be the easiest thing to do. Just got four screws for this one. Okay. Like so. And I'll pop those in the container there. And I can just pop that out. Okay, so I can then keep that as as a spare, I'll put that to one side. It comes in two separate parts there. All right, or well, actually, sorry, three separate parts. So I'll just keep that all as one piece. Now I've also got uh, these two here, which are on their own. So I might as well keep that. three separate parts there so I'll keep those I don't really know if I'll bother keeping any of these other ones um, but I'll, I'll come back to those in a moment but this is the key bed here I, I mean I'm having problems with various keys just not working or just just coming in at the wrong time when I'm hitting the note and I've tried lifting up the, the rubber part here and just cleaning underneath and vacuuming out and that, that has worked but now it's got to the point where it's just very hit and miss, so I've sort of just given up on that. So uh, what I'll do then is I'll perhaps I'll attack this top part here. Um, I might just put this to one side and have another look at that in a moment. Um, not sure how easy these will be to get out, but we'll just see how we go. Right, so I've done quite a few repairs on this already with my soldering iron. You probably can't see that in the shop, but maybe if I hold it up a bit, but uh, I have re-soldered some of these joints here, which have sort of cracked through wear and tear. That's just from plugging into these sockets here. Uh, when you take the jack in and out, that actually just puts pressure and wear and tear on these uh, on these connections here. So over time, they've just broken broken down and sort of cracked a bit. So I've I've have actually fixed those. And I know they're all working, so I may as well take this board out and keep that as a spare board in case something happens or goes completely wrong with one of my other keyboards and I need to replace the whole board. So, once again, just a case of removing the screws. So that's the last one. <clears throat> now I wish you had to pop it out. Right, so there's, there's your connect connectors there for your... Um, <clears throat> audio out, audio in, microphone, and also your sustain pedal, and you've got your power connection there, your MIDI. So I'll retain that, I'll keep that, and perhaps if I just unplug from this lower board here, because that's got the clip on it, I might need to use a screwdriver, but we'll see. I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, but I've only got so much space to work in here. Oh yeah, I just needed to push on that a bit harder, I think. So this one should be easy. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, we've got another, another one here. Okay, and this one here. So I guess this is the main main motherboard. And this one here goes all the way through to the Headphone jack there, I think it's easier just obviously to unplug it from there like that. Um, doesn't, it doesn't actually, oh no, I think it's labelled, it says HB, so I don't know if that stands for headphone something. It says 2HB anyway, so at least we've got a bit of an idea. Oh, this says 2MB, so I guess that's motherboard. MB is motherboard, HB must stand for, maybe someone knows what that stands for. Okay, so, right, we've got that now. I actually put a couple of things in here a while back because when you plug into these sockets here, um, they tend to move. 
And I, what I did was is I actually sort of <laughs> jammed some things in between just to stop them from moving from side to side because it was the side to side movement as well as the up and down movement that was causing these to, to get damaged. It's just the way it's designed. So, I mean, I'll probably just take those out and um, yeah, just put it to one side uh, without those there. And I've got some bags, so I guess I'll just pop each board in a, in a plastic bag like that um, and store it like that. That's probably going to be fine. So, well, I guess it's a case of what's next. Well, if we look sort of on the top here, so there's our main display. So that's going to be, uh, looks like it's this one here, isn't it? So that's going to be worth keeping. Now, I guess I want to get this main board out. Um, so I guess once again, take some screws, remove some screws. I can see a couple there. We've got some ribbon cables here, obviously going to the speakers. So I might as well unplug the speakers. First, like that. Um, hopefully these just pop out. It might be easier to take the board out first. We'll just see how we go. Let's get this screw up. There we go. So that looks like our main. I guess that's the processor there, is it? And uh, other chips on the board there. Yeah, all right, so we'll got a bag for that. I might as well just pop it in a bag now, I guess. These are just some old plastic bags. I suppose anti-static bags are probably the right way to go, but as I say, this is just um, spare parts, which I'm probably never going to use it anyway. So we've got that one. Um, these other boards, so there's our display board there. Our LCD display. Now I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver for that, which I've got. Alright. So, I think this is handy to have actually um, to keep this because I guess it's possible that one of the displays on my other keyboards could easily fail. I mean, it, it hasn't happened yet, but you never know. And if I've got this as a spare, then um, I'll be back up and running. So, We've got a small bag for that somewhere. Oh, well, I'll just pop it in one of these bags. There we go. If I put each board in a separate bag, then I know the boards aren't going to sort of be touching each other and potentially causing problems. So, there we go. So, that's our LCD display. Um, this one here, if we turn it over so we can have a look here. So, we've taken that out. These are also for all our one-touch buttons, so once again, lots of screws. I think we're going to need the biggest screwdriver for that one. There we go. Yeah, so these are all our one-touch buttons. So I suppose, you know, once again, if something ever went wrong, a couple of these buttons stopped working on one of my other keyboards, I could just... I could just... Um, take out the board and replace it with this one. And it's better, it's better than obviously throwing them into the rubbish. And I suppose you've got to recycle these things properly, so and that's the other reason why I've just decided to hang on to them. Now this board here, this is, um, let's turn this over. This is the one where I actually replaced the um, I didn't have a push button switch, I only had a rocker switch, so I, so I replaced the push button switch with, with this rocker switch and in order to get it to fit in I had to actually cut out <laughs> part of the um, PCB board here. Uh, you might be able to see it, I don't know, but I've actually used a saw to cut out part of the board, which didn't damage the board because it didn't. there was no circuitry on that part of the board, so it wasn't interfering with, with the function of it, but I just had to do that in order to get the switch to, to fit in. So that's why that's like that. Um, but I'll I'll keep that switch. Um, oh, now this this is also the volume control. So I'm going to have to. Might be easy if I just take this off. Yep. Okay, let's 
So, yeah, that's. We've got a piece of rubber there as well, haven't we? Yeah. This volume control, I'll, obviously, I'll have to pop the top off if I can. Yeah, there we go. I suppose I might as well keep that, you know, you never know. You might need to replace one of those. But now that I've done that, that board is going to pop out. So I might as well just put that back on. Um, so look. There we go. And that rocker switch. It was a bit of a slightly messy job that I did there. I had to sort of use a bit of tape just to get it to sit in there. Um, in terms of getting it out, that's going to be the next thing. I've used a bit of tape here, obviously underneath, to hold it in place. Yeah, let's pop it through. Okay, so you can see there I did a bit of a, yeah, it wasn't very tidy, it was just pretty rough, but I wasn't too worried about it. So I had to just make that bigger in order to fit this switch uh, through the hole there. There's some more of those buttons there. Okay, so, I mean, probably not a lot of point keeping that, but... Anyway, we might as well keep everything together in the meantime. Uh, where are we at now? So, well, this is one worth keeping. This is the headphone for the two headphones. Uh, I've actually done a repair on this already. I had to re-solder it, which you'll probably see when I take it out. There we go. So a bit of glue holding the wire down there. Um, yeah, if you can see that, but I actually had to re-solder these joints here, because once again, from plugging the headphones in and out, the movement and the pressure on these sockets caused the solder to crack, and I had to do um, some re-soldering there. Anyway, we'll keep that the way it is. Um, where's this going? Here we go. So, let's take that bit of tape off. Alright, so that's another part there. Now this is our pitch bend wheel here. But it's not something I've ever used. Unfortunately on these keyboards there's only a pitch bend um, option. There's no modulation. Uh, option uh, with that wheel, so it's kind of a little bit limited, but so there we are. That's out. Okay, it's another piece, another piece of the puzzle, and that just leaves really a couple of other things here. We've got jog wheel, um, the rest of our buttons there. We'll see if this comes off. I uh, might have to pop off. I think I'll probably have to pop the top of this jog wheel off. And I'll just use a screwdriver there. There we go. This comes off like that. Unscrew all the screws. I didn't really think there was any point trying to sell this. I mean. Someone might have paid might have paid me you know, fifty dollars for it or something. I don't know, but oh well. I figured I'll just make a video instead. So, uh, it's just just worthwhile, I think. That is all the screws for that one. Oh, we'll unplug that. It's our jog wheel. Um, there's all our buttons there. We've got all the rubber pieces. Just sit on top. For some reason, oh, I see they seem to have, looks like it's come apart there. Not sure if that was, I think it was joined at one stage, but never mind. 
at least we've got these rubber bits um, as spares, you know, if, if, if we need them. I can just keep those. I'll sort that out later on though. And there's some more rubber pieces there. In terms of this jog wheel, um, not sure what the story is with this. But we can just. Well, we probably have to. Yeah, I'll have to use some pliers actually to unbolt that, which I might be able to do. Just turn that over again. Looks like there's a washer. Yeah, just holding that in place there. And there we go. Okay, that's our jog wheel there. Keep all the bits. And screw that back on, Just like that. And I've got the obviously the top part there. All right, there we go. There's our. Uh, separated uh, jog wheel, so that just pops over there. So we're almost done, I think. Um, as I say, this is the part that I'm gonna recycle. I'll just pop it in the recycling. Uh, we've got the speakers here, though. Uh, oh, and also we've got the USB. Okay, so that's our USB connection. Um, that's just a couple of screws. Actually, that might be a bit harder to get to because this is in the way, so I'm gonna have to take this off first. Speakers on the Medallia are, are, are real high quality, or at least, or, or the amplification, and the, ampl the amplifier on the Medallia is actually quite uh, quite powerful. Uh, what's it, about 15 watts, I think, or something. Um, so the speakers push out a good good amount of bass and in uh, a decent volume. So you can use this without external amplification. If you're just in a small room, it's it's does the job pretty well. Okay, so I've managed to pop out the speaker grill. Just around the other way there. <laughs> there you go. So it's just got these clips all around the edges there, which um, just twist into the holes underneath. So I've taken that out. And it looks like the problem I've got here is this little speaker here, which is a little tweeter, is permanently fixed into the unit. I can't actually get that out, so I'm just gonna have to grab a pair of cutters. Okay, so I'll just, I could chop the wires at the top here, but I think because I'm gonna put this in the recycling bin, this plastic lid, I'll, I'll just chop the wires right at the connection there. Okay, that's one. All right, so that's taken that off, and I might just get my soldering iron and uh, remove those wires a bit later on. So that speaker is off, which means I can now get to this little USB uh, connection here. I might have to, I think we can do it from the top there. My apologies if I'm blocking some of the shot here. I realize that part of the video is probably Bit obscured by me leaning over here but it's just the nature of the setup that I've got here makes it a bit tricky to get everything in view but hopefully you get the idea okay so that's off that's our USB port there so we can keep that um, now I've taken this one off this is the other speaker okay so that's the other cover for the speaker there which as I say can go in the recycling I might just keep that bit of foam, and we'll just quickly take the speaker out. Grab another screwdriver. Shouldn't. Oh, you'll need those cutters for the others. Another bit. Okay, there we go. Just remove that other piece of tape on the other side. Not really sure what it's there for. I guess it's holding the speaker down so it doesn't rattle, perhaps. Um, maybe in case the screws come loose or something. Um, I don't know why I keep grabbing that screwdriver. This is the one I want. I suppose this will probably be full of dust as well. Yep. So even with the speaker grill, you can see the dust still gets through. And 
obviously, obviously the speaker grill is quite porous. There's no, you know, there's no material. Bit of a shame, really, if they put a bit of cloth under there. Um, that would have stopped, obviously, most of that dust from getting through. But it hasn't really been a problem so far. And it'll be the same thing again here. I'll just have to chop those two wires. Because as I say, it looks like that little tweeter is glued in and there's no way that I can actually get to it. Yeah, it's definitely not really any way I can get to it. So that's okay. Just chop those wires. Oh, there we go. Just pull it. <laughs> that was just as easy, wasn't it? Okay, so that's our other speaker there. Now we'll just have to pop off this grill. So as I mentioned just before, um, what we've got is we've got these tabs which hold the grill in place. They're just twisted, twisted around. So what I have to do is just grab my pliers, just twist each one. Like so. Pulling it from the other side here. There we go. Okay, that's out. So I could possibly keep that, you know, as a spare. This one's, you know, it's not bent or buckled on top, so you know, if I decide I want to re replace the grill, I'm one of my other medallies, I you know, could just use this one. So it probably doesn't hurt to keep it. And I guess perhaps keep both actually. So that's that's those out and you can see all the dust that's accumulated over the years. So that's what I mean, if there, if there was a bit of cloth under that grill, it would, uh, I imagine it would make quite a bit of difference just to keep that dust off. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, what we'll do though is I'll just, just remove these two parts here. These are just the um, part of this part of the speaker assembly. It obviously allows a bit of airflow through there. Um, so those those just come off. Let's grab a screwdriver. Take this one off on this side. Basically, I'm just getting rid of all the screws so that when I recycle this, it's not going to have any other metal parts left over except for those little tweeters which I can't get out. And I think we've just got these ones here, which is part of the USB assembly. So that's that. Don't really need to keep that, but maybe I'll maybe I'll put all these plastic bits in the recycling just like that. Se separate parts. So I think that's it by the looks of it. Yeah, so there's our lid. I mean there's not really any point in me keeping that lid, I don't think. I mean, I'm not really gonna use the lid as a spare part, I I, I shouldn't think. And as I say, this is an older one. It's got this older uh, display here, which is darker. It's harder to read. I could pop that out, um, but because I've already cut this and everything like that, no, there's no point keeping it. So what I'll do is I'll run a saw through there. I'll just try using my hand saw, I think, and cut through that, and then I can just uh, pop it in the recycling. So I'll do that a bit later on. We'll put that to one side. And... Um, Oh, and the other thing I'll quickly mention is I have kept this is the this is the music stand which comes with the medallion, so I'm keeping that. Good to have that as a spare. So yeah, I'll hang on to that. And of course, I'm hanging on to the power cable as well because it's always good to have a spare power cable in case one goes faulty. So back to the key bed. This might be the more trickier part. Uh, I'm not sure actually. It might just come off in one piece. Um, what I'll do is I'll have to obviously take 
all these keys off. So we'll just do that quickly. Even though I'm not going to be keeping all these. Um, I've got to remove them anyway, really, just to get to the board underneath. I'll just pop those over there. Responsible recycling, I suppose. And I'm just not one to waste things, you know, I don't like just throwing things out. Um, I don't like you know, holding on to junk either, but it's kind of like a happy medium. I could keep this one on the end. I might keep that just as a separate piece. See, that's that one that's completely broken there. So definitely won't be keeping that. And we've got this single bit on the end, which I will keep. Okay. Right, and now I should have to just peel off these rubber pieces, which, which are handy to have as spares. And they will come off separately. And of course, this is the part which I've tried cleaning, you know, with a soft cloth and a little, little bit of cleaner and just gone in there and wiped and also vacuumed off dirt and debris but the problem that I was having with the keyboard with the notes cutting out and all that still kept on happening so I just had to give up on it in the end and just say oh well enough's enough I don't think I'll keep all those but I'll sort those out later on now this board then as we can see we've got all separate parts um, I mean, I know these ones up here, I never had any problems with the notes up on that end. It was sort of around this area that I was having trouble. So it might be worth keeping um, those parts. I don't know yet, but I just have to use my smaller screwdriver. Right, so that's those cables now yet, so I can pull those through then. Like that. And the same goes with this. Except that's got another cable obviously linking to this part so <laughs> anyway I think we can pull these off yeah. and, it, and it might be worth I think these are probably okay I could um, test them I suppose with a multimeter and make sure the connection is all right so it's probably going to be worthwhile keeping those so I'll just get this last last one out which is all in one unit yeah well I may not keep that I think if I started having trouble with the keys on any of my other Medellis, I think I'd probably just say, right, that's it, I'll just have to, you know, basically dispose of it because, you know, all of this is, takes a lot of time and it's no guarantee it's going to fix it anyway. These other parts here, as you can see, are probably a bit easier to, to replace. You know, you're not having to get under, you're not having to get underneath the key bed or anything. Okay, there we go, that's out. So, yeah, that's permanently soldered on there um, so I won't you know, I won't bother keeping that um, if, if I could have un unclipped that I might have kept this but I think uh, I think that's just destined for the scrap heap so we'll uh, put that on the scrap pile out of one out of the way there all right now as for getting to the rest of this, now I know there, oh well we can get rid of this piece of metal because I do want to, same sort of screw there, I do want to actually do the same thing where I'll just have to saw this in half so I can fit it in the bin. So in order to do that I need to get rid of these chunks of metal which are getting in the way. So I can go on the, can go on the rubbish pile. Um, now this cable here is permanently fixed into the, this is the this is the connection for your unit pedal for the three pedals which come on a separate music stand and uh, that connects to the base of the keyboard there it looks like it's permanently glued in I don't think I can just push it out or pop it out I could try maybe I'll just have a quick look it looks like there's a couple of clips there um, 
I might be able to force it out, but I don't really want to stab myself. Um, it might be a bit of a bit more work involved with that. It's, as I say, it's definitely glued there, so I might have to try and unseal that glue. Yeah, we'll see how we go anyway. Otherwise, I'll just chop that off. Now, this uh, all these keys then it looks like if we turn this over, we've got the rest of the screws that hold the main uh, key bed in place. So that's these screws here. These are the ones that I was talking about which don't have arrows on them. So if you need to get to the back of this inside like I did before, I showed you it's just the screws with arrows that you take out. But obviously the rest of the screws are, are what's holding this in place. So I'll have to quickly take those out. Okay, I think that's all of them. Let's see what happens. It feels like something's still holding some place. Oh no, that's all right. There it goes. Okay, brilliant. So, yeah, you see, you can see all the dust and debris, probably bits of food and stuff which have actually fallen into the keyboard. I've actually cleaned the top of this out a few times, so it's probably not as dirty as it, what, what it might otherwise have been. But anyway, at least I've now got that as a separate piece, and this here, well, what am I going to do with that? Um, I don't think there's any more screws really to... I can't take these individual hammers off, I don't think. Um, there's another piece which has come off. It's a broken part of a key there. I'm getting grease all over my hands as well because this is quite greasy. Um, see these bits of tape I've put in here just to fix this... where this foam is worn out. With the hammers hitting the foam all the time, I've been getting this clunking sound. When you press the key, you go clunk, 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 and that's why I've had to um, put put in new pieces of foam here. Pretty rough sort of job. I might as well just rip out that tape and put that in the bin. Seems a shame, really, all that hard work, but it's been an interesting, interesting exercise along the way, anyway. And that's got me a few extra, probably years out of this keyboard, where otherwise I might have thrown it out a lot sooner. So we'll pop that to one side. And... So therefore what I'm left with is the base part there. And there's the lid. And that's it. We're, we're done. And I'm going to basically chop that in half and then I'll be able to put it in the bin and once that's done no going back <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do a video on how to reassemble this, I think that would be just a just a too much of an exercise, so we'll, we'll just stick to taking this thing apart, not putting it back together again alright, so that's those, I'll go and do that outside and then I'll come back and probably do another quick video on how it looks ready to be thrown in the bin um, I think that's all I've got to do at the moment. Uh, these are all the screws, as you can see I've got a huge huge collection of screws there now. And of course all these smaller ones down here. So I'll probably just put those into a... I've got a small bag here. There we go. It's always good to have some screws for different things, so hang on to those. And... And then I'll sort out all these different parts into sort of different bags, different plastic bags and all the rest of it. Probably store them in some sort of box. And uh, that should be it. Alright, so I'll, I'll end this part of the video here. Go and chop this uh, lid and base in half and uh, then we should just about be done. Okay, well there you have it folks. There's all the parts uh, that I've decided I'm going to keep. And uh, we'll just quickly go through them. So we've got the main PCB board there. We've got the um, audio board there for your um, audio in, microphone in, and audio out, etc. Uh, we've got the display. Okay. I think that's definitely worth keeping that, so I've got a spare display if I need it. Now we've got various other PCB boards here. We've got the headphone um, board there. We've got the USB. Uh, we've got the volume control and the various other rhythm uh, ribbon cables uh, there. And this is the one that came out of the bottom of the 
Um, this is the one that I had trouble getting out, was glued in, which is the one where the unit pedal gets connected into this here, and uh, that's on the base of the keyboard. Well, I've taken that out. I might just keep that anyway, just so I've got that as a spare connector in case uh, I need it. So we've got that, we've got all the screws, okay, quite a collection there. A couple of PCB boards here, this is for the um, one, ton one touch buttons on the keyboard. I know those are all working okay, so I might as well keep those. And then of course you've got the rubber uh, bits that go with that. Uh, these are the rubber buttons here that correspond with those keys. And I've also got these here which are for the actual piano keys themselves. Don't really need all those, but what the heck, I might as well keep them anyway. Uh, not going to take up too much space. Now we've got the two speakers. Okay, and I've actually cleaned those out, got rid of all the dust, just with a vacuum cleaner and a brush. So that's all cleaned up now. And uh, just various keys there. These ones are all fine, they're not broken, so I might just keep all those. And uh, we've got our speaker grill covers there. And that's the foam that was packed behind the speakers. So I might just keep that just to have for something else in case I need it. And the only other thing uh, that I had to take off, uh, had to unscrew, you would have seen it in the previous section of the video. Uh, this was actually in the base of the keyboard underneath the keys. So I had to obviously unscrew that before I could uh, separate or cut the actual base in half. And so I've done that. And uh, <laughs> I could keep that, I suppose, might make a good stake for uh, holding up a tree or something, who knows? But you know, probably no harm in hanging on to it just in case. Alright, so that's basically what I'm going to hang on to, and in terms of what I'm throwing out, well, we've got, this is all rubbish, okay, I did actually remove the uh, display cover there, that's what sits on top of the um, LCD display there, okay, but I don't think there's any point keeping that, because that's an old style, that's a darker one, that, sorry, it goes up that way, that's an older one, so I don't think there's any point in me keeping that, so that can be thrown out. So I've got the broken keys, I've got the speaker covers here, a few other bits of plastic. I've got these, uh, these are the uh, PCB boards that were sitting under the keys, okay. I'm not going to keep those, so they can be thrown away. And there we go, that's the main keyboard body there, okay. So that's all ready to go, and I think you know what I'm going to go and do with that. In fact, I'm going to go and do it right now. Thanks for uh, joining me in this video, folks, and uh, I'm sure you probably won't have to do this yourself, but I just thought it was an interesting exercise and uh, good to see how it all goes together and all comes apart. And as usual, if you've got any questions, just feel free to drop me a message and I'll do my best to reply. So uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next video, and thanks very much for joining me. Have a great day.